Good morning all. Relays have arrived in here and uh, I'm going to solder them into my PCB. So these are Hongfa HF102F-P relays, 12 volt DC coil, 20 amp at 250 volt AC contacts. Now these Hongfa relays are clearly modelled on the Omron G4A relay. Uh, the G4A has these top terminals which are just duplicates of the um, switch contacts, not the coil. <laughs> these are not coil connections. Uh, the non, the one that doesn't have the tags on the top has this sort of lump on the top instead. Now interestingly I've printed out a data sheet for the G4A relay and you can see um, there are two types, the terminal or the spade receptacle type on the top or this strange additional box on the top. So very much uh, the Hongfa, well, is a copy of the Omron or vice versa. I suspect that the Hongfa is a copy of the Omron. So let's get these two relays soldered in. Um, these I can put aside for a later variant where there's perhaps a bit more headroom in the box, in the box I'm currently working with, there isn't enough room to take these relays with the uh, spade receptacle on top, so I'll put them to one side. Now I have noticed something on here, and it's this ratings coil. We have the 12 volt DC relay has a rated current uh, for the coil of 75 milliamps, that's 160 ohms coil resistance. And of course there are two of them, so that's 150 milliamps. And that's potentially a problem because my chosen little 12 volt power supply has, here it is, uh, the HLK PM12, and it has a short term maximum output current of 350 milliamps, uh, but the maximum output current for a long time greater than or equal to 250 milliamps. So 150 milliamps of that is used up just in the relays. And that might be an issue, particularly when later I'm considering adding an Arduino to this. Uh, not quite high enough. That Oh, I wonder if that would work. Put that under there. Oh yes, that's just about right. I think, yes, perfect. Right, let's solder these relays in. Now actually I only need the coil terminal soldered in for now, so perhaps I'll do that. Just put the coils in, not worry about the mains. Oh, these holes are quite big. I think it's because the pins are not circular, they're flat, so it's taking a fair bit of solder. Anyway, that's got the coils soldered in. Now if I put 12 volts on this, port, this board, the coil should pull in. Right, 12 volt current limited power supply. Uh, that is negative, so that goes on zero volts. And this is plus 12 volts, which is there. And they pull in. Fantastic, I should have put some LEDs on these, shouldn't I? Because it's not very visual, although I expect you heard that. Right, let me just sketch out the schematic for these uh, relay driver circuits. And it is this, um, 12 volts plus 12 volts, relay coil, like so, and then transistor, uh, NPN, so it's uh, that way, isn't it? And um, now across the relay coil, there is also a diode, like so, going up to 12 volts. And also on here, there's provision for a capacitor uh, which looks like this, which also runs across the relay coil. Now, the purpose of that capacitor is to prevent chatter on this relay. So it just provides a little bit of energy storage to either hold it on or hold it off, stops it clattering at uh, high frequency. On here, I've got a 1K resistor, and that is pulled up with a 10k resistor, oh I'll draw that one as a box because that's how I've started, 10k which goes to there. Now there are times two of these circuits because there are two relays 
Um, I think I use separate base resistors for the two transistors, but a single common 10K pull-up. This, of course, is zero volts. So that's the schematic of the relay driver circuit. This is a 4007, I believe. So if I reapply 12 volts to um, this circuit, I should be able to, looking back at this schematic, um, pull this point here, which I've called relays. It's actually there. It's these points across here. Pull that to ground and that should turn the relays off. So let's give that a try. So 12 volts on the board. The relays are both pulled in. Now let's connect relays, which is there, to naught volts, which is there. And when I connect that, the relays actually uh, turn off. So that's good. The uh, transistor relay driver circuits do work. Very nice. So in terms of mains from your house to the car, an EVSE, uh, an AC charger EVSE like this is actually very simple. It is just mains from your house through a couple of relays, one for live, one for neutral, uh, to the car. Now, why wouldn't you just have mains from your house directly connected without the relays to here? Well, here is the 10 amp granny charger that came with my car. The car is an MG ZS. Now at one end you've got this, it's a 13 amp uh, plug which goes into a domestic outlet. They limit these to 10 amps just in case your wiring's a bit dodgy. They don't want to run at the full 13 amps. So that's at one end, the relays are inside that box. And at the other end you've got this and if I take the cap off like so you can see why you wouldn't want mains continuously on there because if you were silly and played with screwdrivers that's live one that's neutral as you can see it wouldn't be a good idea to have permanent mains on there so the idea of the relays is that mains is not applied to these pins until the EVSE knows that this connector is plugged into the car and nobody can stick their fingers in it. Now when you do plug this plug into the car, this plug incidentally will be connected to the terminal block here, and um, these relays close, then what's to stop the car pulling the full seven kilowatts, because my car can pull seven kilowatts, now that's about 30 amps, what's to stop the car pulling seven kilowatts, and with this at the other end, blowing this 13 amp fuse. Well, it's all down to this connector here, which is called CP, the control pilot. So what does the control pilot signal look like? Well, it looks like this. Uh, this is from a Texas Instruments uh, webpage. I'll put a link to that in the description. Um, this signal can be in a number of different states. In state A, it's simply plus 12 volts DC. In most of the other states, it is a one kilohertz square wave, uh, bipolar, so it um, oscillates between plus 12 volts at this point and minus 12 volts. In fact, this square wave should always drop to minus 12 volts at the bottom end, and then at the top end, it can be nine volts, six volts, can sometimes be three volts. Um, if it drops to nine volts, six volts, and three volts, uh, at both the top and the bottom. That is actually a fault condition. That means that there's a missing diode in the car. We'll come back to that later. But what we're really looking for is the car pulling this down to nine volts. The EVSE then says, okay, I'll, I'll turn on the oscillation. It starts off as 12 volts DC. The car pulls it down to nine volts. The EVSE then starts the oscillator running. The car then sees the oscillations, pulls the uh, control pilot signal further down to six volts. If it pulls down to three volts, it's saying I need ventilation. That's for lead acid batteries. It's not uh, something that happens these days. So it should pull it down to six volts. But of course the bottom end should still be 12 volts. And at that point, the relays close and mains is sent from your domestic uh, household main socket into the car. 
Now the thing that tells the car not to pull the full 7 kilowatts, the full 30 amps, is the width, the duty cycle of this 1 kilohertz square wave. You can see here that the duty cycle is shown as 50%. Now that actually means pull 30 amps. In order to pull lower currents, we have to reduce the width of this pulse. The width of the high part, of course the width of the low part gets wider. Um, I think for 10 amps, I'll just look it up. Uh, yes, for 10 amps, well 9.6 it says here, 15% duty cycle on that square wave. Um, for 6 amps we have 10%. So the MG EVSE I just showed you will probably have a 16% duty cycle on the control pilot output. So what I need to do next on here is to build some circuitry in this prototyping area that can produce a variable duty cycle uh, 1 kilohertz square wave which oscillates between plus 12 volts and minus 12 volts but can be pulled down on its positive side to 9 volts or 6 volts by the car. The car will do that. So I need a clock oscillator and then I need some circuitry to check these 9 volt, 6 volt um, voltage levels and when it sees 6 volts on the positive side of the square wave the circuitry will turn these relays on. That's it in essence. Now as I said in a previous video I am going to be basing um, the circuitry for this very much on Bernhard Walter's analog EVSE project and uh, Bernhard has very kindly given me permission to show his website. This is the front page of Analog EVSE and to use his circuitry. So this is the schematic um, that he put together for a very basic uh, analog. Now analog I think um, in terms of this circuit means no programmed devices. So I mean there's a little bit of digital circuitry here. This is an oscillator with a crystal and a lot of dividers to bring it down to one kilohertz and some comparators and some transistors and a few other bits and pieces. But uh, it just means there are no microcontrollers in this and uh, the reason I'm building my first version of this EVSE with no microcontrollers is because with circuitry like this you can see how it works. With microcontrollers it's just a big software listing. This is easier to see what's going on. I will put links to uh, this website and also this schematic in the description below. Now just taking a quick look at this schematic, uh, we've got power supply up here. I'm doing mine slightly differently. I'm going to use uh, this for plus 12 volts and for minus 12 volts. Oh, I think it's turned up actually. Yes, in here I believe. Let's have a look. Yeah, this thing and this is the uh, correct B1212S, uh, 1 watt with the four pins at 0.1 inch spacings. That now should be compatible with that footprint there. So that's going to generate the minus 12 and this thing's going to generate the plus 12. This is a 4.096 megahertz crystal. Divide that down a few times and you get exactly one kilohertz. This is an integrator so that you get something approximating to a triangle wave. Actually, it's probably more like uh, that and that and that and that because it's uh, just a simple capacitor charging up and discharging. Put that through a comparator and we can chop out a piece of that. So that gives you your variable duty cycle square wave. Variable because you can vary the voltage on one input of the comparator. This comparator, I believe, I don't need. I'm thinking of connecting this comparator straight to the plus and minus 12 uh, driver here. This is a complementary emitter follower circuit, so that'll push the... Uh, vo Actually, it'll only go to about 11.4 positive and 11.4 negative, but that should be adequate. Um, this is a peak detector or peak follower, so this will provide a voltage which is the... Uh, top of the waveform minus another 0.6 volts of course because there's a diode there and then there's also a negative peak follower down here 
This just checks that the bottom of the waveform, well, it'll follow the bottom of the waveform, but uh, this comparator just checks that this is minus 12 and not one of those reduced negative waveform voltages that we saw on that, this section. And over here we have four comparators. Now two of them are just driving LEDs for the user feedback. Well, I'm not intending to have any user feedback. It will just do its thing. So I think I only need uh, two of these comparators. They are essentially a window comparator. Uh, they have open collector outputs and the outputs are tied together. There's a diode in there, but I believe that's just to make sure that only one of these four LEDs comes on at any one time. So these are uh, open collector wire anded. And if you are within a certain window of voltages, now it should be about plus 7.5 at the top so that we see the six volt uh, voltage, which allows the relay to pull in and no more than about 1.5 at the bottom, I think it is, so that the three volt uh, signal or six volt signals are both valid. Then it will turn on the relay driver, the relays will pull in and mains will go from domestic household supply out to the car. That's essentially what this does. Now up here, um, strung between plus 12 and minus 12, there is a resistor divider and that provides all the voltages that the comparator inputs are comparing against. When I first looked at these, I thought, oh, they're all a bit low. This 6.1, I thought, well, that should be 7.5. And this uh, 1.2, I thought, well, that should be 1.5. And I think they're low because we've got the diode drop uh, from 12 volts here. So this only goes up to 11.4. Another diode drop here. So plus 12 volts will actually only be 10.8 at this point. And I think that's why these are all a bit low. So in terms of what I need to put on this board, um, I'm thinking it's uh, this chip, which is a CD4060. I got one of those from CPC with my last order. And I think I'm gonna need one, two, uh, two, three comparators. And uh, Bernhardt has used the LM2901, mainly because it's got a wider temperature range. It can do temperatures below zero which could be quite handy. So I've got some LM2901s here. I think I'm only going to need one because these are quad packages and I think I need one, two, three comparators. I think that's all I need. A couple of transistors, diodes, resistors, capacitors. Job done. Now I need this 4.096 megahertz crystal for the master clock frequency to generate one kilohertz here. That should be in here. This came from eBay, let's take a look. Yep, crystals. And uh, yep, those are indeed 4.096 megahertz. Now, one thing that Bernhardt didn't include in his design is a transient suppression diode on the CP line. So that would be here um, to ground or protective earth. And I can't remember how this is drawn. I think it's drawn as a double diode, like so. And so I've got these uh, P6KE uh, G, I think these are for glass passivated. It's the only ones that uh, CPC had. They didn't have the standard ones. And I've gone for 18 CA, so that's bi-directional, 18 volt. Remember, this only goes up to plus or minus 12 volts. So this should just clamp out any transients above 18 volts. You've got to remember that this line it's potentially quite long and runs all the way that, along that cable to the vehicle. Now, I believe there's a suppression diode in the vehicle, but I think it makes sense to also put one uh, here. So I've got that just there between PE and control pilot. So I think we're good to go. As long as the oscillator here and the comparators don't draw more than 100 milliamps, and they really shouldn't, uh, from the power supply, because that's all I've got left on this little uh, mains power supply, then I think this circuit should work. I will start uh, assembling that in the next video, but I just wanted to get everything uh, sorted out for that process in this video. But I think uh, as far as this video is concerned, that's pretty much it. So I'll say cheerio.